I'm Andy Rink. I'm a second year Stanford Biodesign Fellow. I'm Varun Baraya, and I'm a Biodesign Fellow. The need area we're working in is to treat sleep tears in children. The way we approach transitioning from concept to prototype was uh, we, we cut a lot of concepts down based on technical viability and based on the needs criteria we had generated right at the start of the process. We did start prototyping pretty early and we had a vision of where we wanted to go with the solution. Some of them were, were just sketches or mock-ups. We also got some off-the-shelf um, components our first work like prototype was um, an alarm for deaf people, and it had the same mechanism of action we were looking at for our product, and so um, Andy and I used it on ourselves for a couple of weeks to see if it, it did what we expected it to do. And when we saw success with that, then we actually started putting together a prototype of our own uh, that was more tailored to um, uh, the need we were trying to solve. And then we also built some looks like prototypes that had the form factor of what we were thinking we were going to do. It's a sleep-based device. It's uh, placed around the bed when, uh, during sleep at night. So we built some different looks like models to have, uh, to have users um, try it out. We tried it out in our own beds. We had users try it out in their beds. We did a lot of that for, um, for feedback on usability, things like that. I think once we had sort of a looks like prototype, it was important that we just placed it in front of our users and let them figure out what to do with it, um, rather than leading them down our thought process of how the device would be used. And um, that sort of gave us a lot more input than, um, than actually telling them how to use it. We wanted to get uh, as, as many um, kids in our target age range to use our prototypes as possible. Um, we were targeting, you know, we didn't want 100, but if we could get 10 or 15, something like that, that could be, that could be great. So we just essentially targeted um, friends that we know in the area that have kids. We were trying to make a, a small wearable band, and our initial thought was, this is easy. I mean, we, we're not going to learn anything out of this. So we got some off the shelf, just black Velcro straps to see, will, will kids wear something? And we found, well, kids may, but they hate the color black. And then they all had suggestions of what color they actually wanted it to look like and what material they wanted it made of. And so there we thought, well, this is just going to be impossible. We're going to have 250 different combinations to satisfy all the kids. We saw that kids would take the, these things that they were wearing in the morning, if they're old enough where they kind of get dressed by themselves, they would lose the thing, they'd throw it, and we'd never find it ever again. So there were a lot of problems with, with that form factor. We found out a lot early on from that, um, which, may, which led us to the um, form factor we have now of something that's under the mattress instead of something that, that kids have to wear. We didn't even realize how different the mattress thicknesses can be, which can really have an effect for what we were trying to do. We saw difficulties when some of the users were trying to actually um, put our device into the bed. Um, we saw how that could be challenging in ways that we could, we could help change the form factor. Advice on prototyping is to do it early, and do it earlier than you think you need to do it. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. You'll really learn a lot from it. And I don't know if it really rings true until you actually do it and then see how much feedback you can get, and that certainly happened with us. So when you start, Thinking about prototypes, even if it seems trivial, I think you should build it. I think the last one is don't be too attached to any one concept. Um, people are going to be excited about certain directions, and your concept will change a lot from what you, you start out with. Uh, so be open and really be observant and take in all the feedback that, that you can. In terms of the concept we're working on right now, we're, we're down to a works like prototype that we're uh, we're trying to get into a clinical study here at Stanford. Um, but in the meantime, we're, we're also trying to develop a, a second prototype based on a different concept, uh, sort of as a plan B, um, in case our, our first prototype doesn't uh, give us the efficacy that we're looking at, um, trying to bring the second uh, concept a little further along so we might be able to take that into a clinical study if the first one doesn't pan out.